Pritesh, I want to come back to you now and talk about that because you started by saying that starting up is easy, uh, scaling up is the challenging part. And what we have started to see already in the D2C space is that standalone brands are now being picked up by uh, the FMCG big boys, so to speak. So, uh, you know, A, specifically, what are the problems with scaling up that you're facing at this point in time? And is that eventually uh, going to have to be the future for a lot of uh, the D2C players uh, being picked up by the incumbents, the legacy incumbents, so to speak? Uh, so, the predominant challenges that we face uh, today as a D2C brand is obviously COVID uh, really helped us give a lot of tailwinds uh, to the efforts that we were putting on our online efforts. Uh, with things opening up as well, it's more uh, focused towards our omni-channel growth now. Uh, people have gone back to uh, shopping uh, in their traditional ways, which is offline as well. 92% almost of all retail happens offline in India. Our penetration on online is, is yet very nascent. Uh, so one of the things that we are facing today is, uh, whilst we don't have much trouble in uh, getting orders from our repeat customers, one of the things that has definitely moved uh, quite a bit in terms of, you know, uh, the cost factor is acquiring the uh, the new consumer to, uh, to, to you know, induce trials and therefore uh, make sure that, you know, we have a good lifetime value out of this customer. So essentially what we are having to face is uh, having to spill out a lot, a larger sum of the money uh, to get this consumer to try our product for the first time. And I think uh, that has been uh, a case for the last one uh, odd year now where it's it's consistently on the rise because of, uh, of many brands uh, trying to come in on the online space and also wanting a space in the same advertising um, you know, field as, as we are. Uh, so the consumer online has not grown so much, but you know, the number of brands that are playing within this, uh, within this uh, vertical has grown uh, uh, multifold in the last uh, year or so. Uh, so obviously the demand and supply is, is, is disproportionate at this point and hence having to shell out a lot more money. Uh, the other thing that we are facing uh, today is um, uh, offline um, touch points uh, were not uh, so much available for us because we focus too much on DTC. Uh, today, people also want to, you know, touch and feel the products, want to understand, uh, want to speak to a beauty advisor, uh, get a, a personalized regime going for their skin and uh, skin and hair care regimes, and that's what we are looking to uh, focus on right now. But again. Offline is is definitely a much more expensive model because, you know, there is a lot of capital expenditure involved over there as well. Malini, let me address that question uh, with you as well. As Pitesh said, the cost of acquiring customers has gone up significantly because it has become a very competitive market at this point in time. How much of a challenge is that for you? What do you do to de-risk yourself? I, you know, I, I know every brand is sort of trying to work on a strategy of communicating specifically with different kinds of communities that you wish to address. And perhaps to start with, profit will be in the niches as well for some, some of the brands like yours. But what's the strategy there on the marketing side? And more importantly, what are the challenges on the manufacturing side? Because we haven't spoken about that at all. Sure. Um, so, uh, Sheen, uh, you know, uh, about the increasing customer acquisition cost, I think that's uh, common across the table uh, because your inventory had remained the same, but there are multiple brands in the market with a lot of capital who are competing and hence, uh, you know, it is becoming extremely difficult. A lot of brands are competing for the same consumer. So I think what uh, definitely becomes important is, uh, you know, that sharp communication, um, as you already pointed out, right? So how well do you know your consumer? How well do you know your target group? And how sharply do you talk to them? And how sharply do you um, address their concerns and uh, provide a solution through your communication? I think that's absolutely important. And, uh, uh, you know, as a founder, for me, a lot of my time kind of goes into that. And that is something uh, you know, we consciously want to do going forward as well because uh, unless and until we actually talk about the product benefits rightly to the target group, they would not even know of it. And uh, so we have seen that by being that sharp, uh, customer acquisition costs can be addressed. 
And point number two around the customer acquisition cost is everyone is actually doing digital marketing. But apart from digital marketing, how else can you get a brand recognition is also very important. Uh, you know, uh, the word of mouth. Uh, so the quality of your products become important. And uh, uh, so how are you making those products is also becomes very important. Uh, that's probably where uh, I think yeah, the manufacturer comes in, but probably I'll just pick that up later, just continuing on this bit around, uh, you know, uh, the word of mouth and also multiple types of uh, brand marketing is what I would call it. Like, you know, how do you ensure that your brand is kind mm -hmm. of made known to multiple people in the market through multiple means is absolutely important. Uh, you know, because as Pratish was mentioning, right, you know, you need to ensure that your brand kind of gets picked up by most people. And that only happens when you are there shouting out saying that, hey, listen, I am here, uh, you know, looking out for a need for yours. So, uh, yeah. you know, that can be done in multiple means. Uh, you know, it could be probably done uh, through influencers. I mean, like, you know, that's a very tried and tested uh, method, uh, mm. but you can pick up uh, some sort of celebrities or you can um uh, you know, do it in multiple means, but the idea is uh, apart from the digital yeah. or the performance marketing, how else are you putting the brand out there and making sure that a lot of people are aware of it for, for them to even try out your brand. I think that's basically the crux of marketing comes into play. And yeah. that's what we, we basically want to invest a lot of time there to reduce the customer acquisition cost. Coming to the manufacturing bit, yes. So we basically, yeah. uh, you know, as a brand, what we do is we try to do a lot of focus groups, a lot of consumer interactions before we actually bring out any product in the market. That also means that we take a lot of time mm. to launch a sale SKU in the market. So we usually do like, you know, uh, anywhere between six, six right. to 17 months of cycle of R&D that gets into each and every product. So we kind of try to understand the consumer and then kind of go into R&D with a brief of what the, you know, the expectation of the consumer mm. is and what they're expecting from right from texture to the ingredients to, you know, to the, to the kind of uh, uh, usage. Yeah. So everything kind of gets decided by understanding the consumer and not the other way around. I think manufacturing um, is a difficult right. thing, but more or less it is kind of getting extremely, uh, you know, I would say commonplace and it's kind of becoming more accessible. Uh, uh, you know, what I think we basically mm. have faced issues around is in case if you are utilizing any sort of unique ingredients and how do we kind of uh, import them into India, but that is also, uh, you know, commonly solved through our right. supply chain. Um, and uh, so I think the crux of it is how well do you R&D your product rather than the manufacturing part of it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I get that. And I, I would imagine that procurement is a, a challenge that Pritesh is also uh, faced with, especially when you are dealing with things like uh, organic, uh, uh, you know, skincare, etc. But Shantanu, you know, I want to understand from you, since you're already, uh, you've clocked this mega milestone of 250 crores, how has the playbook changed from being able to get to the 100 crore milestone and now being able to get to the 250 crore milestone? What were you doing then? What are you doing differently today? And, you know, uh, what can we now expect going forward? Uh so I think <clears throat> I agree with Pritesh. I think uh, COVID was a fantastic, uh, fantastic tailwind creator for the for businesses like ours. Uh, while being tragic uh, at a social outcome level, but I think a lot of lot of things fell in place. Our car competitors had struggles with supply chain, etc. So I think the one big shift that we have made is we have really tried to create velocity for our products offline, right? Create the right assortment, be price competitive. Our, our cat, a lot of our categories from shaving to uh, to, to to women's hair removal uh, to razors kind of sit offline consumers buy these offline a lot more than online um, we from assortment to merchandising to relationship with trade uh, and building an outstanding sales force I think there's a lot there is a lot of different muscle that you need to build uh, from an offline standpoint to to create velocity for your product from identification of stores, to, to activating stores, to making sure that your sales force is able to deliver, to making sure that your uh, shopkeeper is able to show and there's discovery and then the consumer is kind of uh, uh, served the right product and the consumer is yeah. happy. Once the consumer is hopefully the product kind of does its job from a repeat standpoint. So that's one big shift for us. The almost 50, more than half our business today is offline. And I presume that when we get from 250 to 
500, that number will be 70 percent, and when you get from 500 to 1,000, that number might be 80 percent. Uh, and that's just the nature of Indian retail. As you scale, you have to build out more offline, right? The second thing I think is uh, we raised capital. I think capital mm. was a significant, uh, you know, accelerant for us. We raised almost 210 crores in our CDC. Um, there was uh, abundant capital. We had clear product market fit. We had a large market and uh, slow incumbents, right? So we kind of fit the bill. So we have uh, kind of smartly used that capital at, at a brand marketing level. I agree with Malini. I think a lot of things are expensive at the performance level. Thankfully, we have uh, almost uh, curtailed our performance spends to less than 20% of what they were before. So we are spending a lot of money on content, which includes, uh, which includes you know, doing podcasts and, you know, working with influencers uh, and, uh, you know, uh, mm. getting consumers to like, like what the company stands for beyond just the product. Well, uh, uh, Malini, uh, Pritesh and Shantanu, we wish you the very best of luck. And I, I, I do hope that, uh, that you get through the volatile times and the turbulent times that we are currently faced with uh, and emerge stronger uh, at the end of it. Uh, thanks very much for joining us here on Young Turks and we wish you the very best of luck. That's it then on this special edition of Young Turks. We are going to take a break. There's a lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere. Back in a minute. Wish more.